Hi everyone, welcome to part 3 of my How to Use Nero Vision series and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to add effects to videos and images in Nero Vision. Once you've got the program open, select Make Movie or Slideshow at the top. Once again I showed you how to fill out this settings window in part 1 of this video series. So once you've done that, click OK. And then a new project window will appear. I'm going to start by importing some pictures so we can then add effects and transitions so it creates a video slideshow of the pictures. So I'm going to go to the pictures tab under the my media subheading. Then click import in the top right followed by import file. I've then located the sample pictures in Windows and I'm then going to double click each picture to import them into Nero Vision. I'm going to import all eight images, so I'll just skip that part along in this video. As you can see, I now have those eight images imported into Nero Vision. And now to put these on the timeline, so they can go on our video, you simply left click and drag them onto the timeline, onto the video one track at the beginning. You can then do the same for all of the other images. You just drag it beside it until it locks in place, so there's no space between the images, for now. And we can do that for all of the images that you want to include in your video slideshow, just like so. So they're all placed side by side, and we can add transitions later. So there we have it, eight images placed side by side on our timeline. Now you can change the duration to whatever you like here. There are several ways to do it. The first is to simply drag it, like so. So left click drag and you can increase the amount of time that that particular image is going to be shown. Or the other perhaps more convenient way when you want to have an exact time is to right click the actual image and then click set duration. You can then type in how much time you want here. So I'll just change that to 0, 08 seconds for example. And there we go we can now see it's increased. Now just like I did in part 1 as you can see, for our HD movie, we have got quite a large black border. So, to make that look a bit better, first left click the image, and then go to the scale part in properties by clicking the arrow on the left. Scroll down if needed until you find fit to screen. And there we go, that now looks better with just black borders on the sides. So I'm now going to do that for all eight images, I'll skip that along. Just something to note here. When you're changing the properties of the image, the slider does have to be on the image itself to be able to change the properties. So that's just something to bear in mind. Okay, now that we have made every image fit to the video player, I'm now going to import some audio to put in the background of this slideshow. So I'm going to go to the audio tab and then click import, followed by import file once again. Now this time I've saved the music in the my music folder in library music. This is the one that comes with Camtasia Studio. So just double click that to import it and then we can drag it from the audio tab onto audio 1. While I'm here I'm also going to increase the duration of each image to 8 seconds. So I'll just do that for all of them now. Okay so now that I've changed the duration of each image to 8 seconds we know how long the image slideshow is going to last. So I'm going to drag my slider across to that point and we can see that it's 1 minute and 4 seconds. So I'm now going to right click our audio file and then click trim. Then in the mark out box at the bottom right I'm going to type in that same number. 01 04 01. So that's now the same as what we've got up here. Then click OK and there we go. The audio is now the right length for our slideshow. So I'll just play that to you now so we've got an idea of what's happening. So the image changes as it should do. Now next we're going to add some transitions to make it more interesting. 
To do this, under the Effect Palette subheading, go to the Transition tab, and then select All from the side. Then the list of transitions that we have to choose from are here. A little bit hard to see on my laptop screen, but I'll just use the split one as an example then. You simply drag it to where you want it between the two images, and it will then apply the transition. Then it automatically goes to the properties transition here, and you can choose the direction, but most importantly, we can change the duration here. So I'm going to change this to 3 seconds, that should be about right. That's automatically applied the effect now, so I'll just play it from here. And that also fits quite nicely with the music now, that's always a good thing. So once again we can apply these transitions anywhere we like, so I'll just continue that now for the rest of the images. Just as an extra note here, if you place a transition on a timeline and in fact you don't like it, it's very easy to remove it by simply right clicking on the transition and then selecting the delete and there it's gone. Okay so once you've applied all the transition effects that you want according to your own preference you may want to consider fading out the music towards the end of the slideshow so it doesn't suddenly stop at a halt. Now to do this right click the audio file on the timeline hover over fade and then select fade out. As you can see this new audio level bar has appeared. Now you've got to decide when you want the fade out to begin. To do this drag this arrow like object here to the point where you want the fade out to begin. So I'm going to put it there and then release to put it there and as we play this now watch the audio level go down as we continue to play it. So there we go, it's faded out to nothing rather than just stopping. So that's how to add the fade out effect. And finally, just to spruce this slideshow up as much as we can, you can add some effects to the individual images. To do that, go to the Effects tab under the Effects Palette subheading. And you can scroll down at lots of different headings we have, such as Adjust, Sharpen and Blur. So I'll just give you an example of what you can do. If we go to the first image, the flower, you can sharpen the image by simply dragging the thumbnail of the effect onto the image itself. It will then automatically apply the effect and you can change to what degree it applies it in the properties box here. For instance you can increase the amount, I'll put it on 80 for instance. And then I can also apply another effect to the same image by going to a different category here. I'll go to simulation for instance. Scroll down a bit so I can see. And I'll add a sparkle effect to this image. Once again, just drag the clip onto the image and a second effect will be applied. Just as before, the properties box will automatically change to that effect. I'll increase the brightness to 75 and radius to 35. And we'll see what that looks like. You may then decide that that's slightly too much, so you could bring the brightness down a bit again and see if it's any better. So you can change the properties as you like until you get it just right. So you can apply effects to all the images that you want, all of them if you like, or perhaps just one. So I'll just do that now for all of my images. I'm now going to export our storyboard to a video file so we can then watch it. As I showed you in video 2, you just click the export button. If you want to put it onto a file to then upload it to YouTube perhaps, you would select export video to file, but there are other options here if you prefer. Drop down the box under format and choose the format that you want to export it to. For YouTube I usually use WMV or MOV. My preference is WMV because of the video size. You can almost always keep the profile the same and then click the export button. You can optionally change where you want it to save as well. The export process will then begin. I'll skip that along in this video.